Hi everyone, this is Star with a message for you today is Monday, January 8th, 2018. I hope you're all doing well and I want to apologize up front. Yes, the photo seems very grainy, the picture. I'm not sure why this is my third attempt, but I'm just doing it because I feel like there's a block. Um, something's trying to get me to not record a video today. So this is a twin flame message for all of you and boy, the energy is extremely intense but good it's not a bad thing so um i have a lot i want to share the first thing i want to share with you is that we are in the year 2018 you add those numbers up it's an 11 an 11 year and you can actually add the 11 and make it a two and make it a, a two year which again two years like a union but 11 is twin flame number 11 is union number 11 is a wake up number it's a spiritual awakening, a spiritual um, shifting that's happening. So we are in this magical, magical year. And one of the things I neglected to share in my previous video, and I may have like touched upon it, but I know I'm like, sometimes when I'm, I'm speaking, I'm falling, I'm sorry, I'm falling down on my sofa. Um, sometimes when I'm speaking on, on the video, I'm like, so much information is coming that I, I get little pieces of it and then I'm like blah, 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 and then I go off on a tangent because something else comes in and I apologize for that but a lot of times I'm a channel so I let things flow through me which is wonderful and good but if you've ever read some of my writings you'll see there's like typos but it's not typos because I don't know how to type it's typos because literally I don't even think my brain or I should say my fingers could keep up with my brain because I I just typed something earlier and I was trying to say stay tuned and I instead I typed stayed and so I laugh and I think oh boy I'm really bad it's not because of my typing it's actually because of my brain I think well it's probably typing too it's probably both but um I started to tell you stuff about what's going on so what I want to tell you about the divine masculine is my guide said to me I asked why is everything seeming to like open up for me like all the things that I seem to have been blocked about before which we've talked about and you've um you've heard in previous videos from me I've shared with you that um there's like all of a sudden I'm able to learn and study things that I wasn't able to before. I'm actually, things are moving out of the way and allowing me through. That is because there is a shift happening, right? With me, because I'm doing work on me, of course, but also a shift is happening with everyone right now and um, particularly with the divine masculine. So my guide's words to me were, he is being magnetically pulled into his alignment magnetically pulled on his path like what is interesting is back in 2010 um i remember getting really upset and thinking i don't want to be on this journey i don't really i don't trust this is who it is because if it was he would be here by now because we love me blah 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 blah. you know you know the usual <laughs> the usual we all say and i recall very clearly having an amazing miraculous vision which i if i can remember where the picture is of my painting that I did, I will share it with you inside one of the comments below so that you can see um, an image that I, I painted, that I had a vision. So I had a vision of marrying my twin in 2010 in a higher dimension. I was teaching a class and simultaneously I was in a classroom but walking to my wedding, but not knowing that's where I was going. I was like, at the same time, I was walking down the street. I was walking in on a pathway in a higher dimensional energy. I want to say it was like um, eighth dimension, but I'm not totally sure because it felt like higher dimension. I actually felt I wanted it to be the fifth dimension, meaning, oh, we're going to get married, so he'll be here tomorrow, which we all learned that, you know, higher dimensional time is not the same as is 3D time. So um, I was walking to my path, and I remember – they, I said to my guides, where am I going? Because I asked lots of questions. And they're like, just follow us. And my guide put his hand out and said, follow me. And I took his hand and he led me to my twin flame. And I, my twin flame was waiting there with this beautiful smile on his face. And we did our vows. Meanwhile, I'm ordering lunch because I had I was teaching a class. I believe it was a Reiki class. And we um, in between, we take a break. And I we walked on the street to lunch at this um, restaurant. And we're sitting there and all this is transpiring as I'm trying to order food and I'm having trying to contain my emotions because it was the most powerful, beautiful image. And he grabbed my hands and we both exchanged vows with no words. It was just a telepathic. And I was amazed. And what's really interesting is the that was a Saturday and that following Monday, he contacted me, my twin contacted me and said, 
I dreamed about you all weekend this weekend. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. What I asked my guys, what does that mean? And they told me he's made the commitment to be with you in this lifetime. And so there's no going back. He's, he's committed to this journey. And I'm telling you this, and what's so beautiful and amazing is I have all this beautiful tingling happening in my body right now. It's like confirmation and affirmation for what I'm saying. And I think just as much as we all need a little, um, you know, you all need a little up, uh, pick me up, I do too every once in a while. And so today that feels really good to have that because I've been a little worried about him, uh, my twin. And so... They said he made the commitment to be with me in this lifetime. Well, that was 2010. Here it is eight years later. And I'm like, what the hell? It's eight years later. You know, where the, where's the commitment? You know, that he's, he's going forward in this life. He's chosen. This is the path he wants to be on. So recently when I asked about like, why, why is all this happening? My guide said he is being magnetized to his path. All twin flames. All the divine masculine is being magnetized. All twin flames are being magnetized to their path, particularly the divine masculine. But they're being being magnetized to their path, to the union, but first to their path. Because in order to get to union, they have to align themselves to spirit, which means a, a lot of change for a lot of those that are still in old relationships that have been like outlived, obviously, um, that are in different geographical locations and they've been kind of denying and not dealing with it but they're actually being called into their path into their mission we, there's like time is like of the essence is what i'm being told and um, there is a sense of urgency that's coming back around but not for the divine feminine as much and you may be feeling it too and there's moments i really feel the urgency other days i don't feel it um but the divine masculine is feeling it they're feeling like time is running out they're feeling like they have they have to do something. It's so important. There's something more for them. It's literally being poured into their energy field, if you will. And there's a magnet pulling them to their path. So no matter where they are and what they're doing, they're constantly being tugged. They're being tugged by the universe, by spirit, by their guides, by you, you know, energetically. So they're literally being pulled to their path. And I love the word magnetized because that just resonates so deeply with me, with my, my beloved. I can feel him being pulled to something. And that's incredible if you think about it. So being magnetized to your path, what does that mean? That means it opens up cans of worms and doors and things that you probably didn't want to look at before and you, you've been running away from. So for example, the Twin Flames um, this past summer, not just, not just Twin Flames, all people actually, this past summer we had the eclipses and they were pulled to their inner child patterns and behaviors. And that's been going on for the last six, seven months now. And that stuff is kicking them up that is kind of pinning them in and trapping them a little bit. And I say trapping. Trapping, I mean that there's no way out of it unless you deal with it. You can't avoid it anymore. You can't run away from the stuff that's been calling for you to work on it. For you, for your twin, for anybody in humanity, we're literally being like given like this is what you need to do. You want to move to the next place. In order to do that, you have to do this piece. So that's been a really strong thing for the Divine Masculine. And I'm, I'm talking primarily about them right now because... Um, I could tell you a lot about the Divine Feminine and what we've been going through and what we've been dealing with. But most of you watching this, I would say 99% of you, are carrying more of the Divine Feminine. Whether you're male or not, you're carrying more of the Divine Feminine because you are more into the awakened alignment of this is what I want to do. This is where I'm supposed to go. This is what I know to be true. You're in that awareness and a lot of the Divine Masculine hasn't been. Or they've had their moments of clarity is what I would call my twin flame. I would say he had moments of clarity throughout this entire journey. So... Um, because this is happening, so much is coming up for them. So many things are surfacing. So the visual that they're showing me as I'm speaking to you right now is as if they're being boxed in. I literally see somebody standing and a box, like the, you know how when a box is flat and then you have to bend it up to flat, to create, create a box because it's just a flat piece of cardboard. Literally I'm seeing pieces being put up around this being. And it's just showing me that they're getting boxed into their emotions, boxed into the issues, boxed into a place where it's like overwhelming them. So if you're starting to feel a lot more amplification of what's going on with your twin, that's probably why. If you're noticing, or you might not be noticing it, but you might be noticing that you're kind of amped up on whatever's going on with you, and you might be feeling stuff, that is definitely amplified by your twin. I'm not saying you don't have your own things bo boxing you up, because quite honestly, we all have things to box us up. And some of us have more than others, but I felt, I definitely felt a shift and a relief for a lot of the divine feminine 
um, as the beginning of the year poured in. And so I want to say to you that to me, that means there is a little bit of a relief for us. And if we're feeling stuff, it might be the twin, our twin amplifying it up for us. So that's a huge piece of what's happening. And while they're being magnetized, think about it. That means they're literally being called to their mission. They're being called to their journey. They're being called to do what they need to do for them. And what's amazing and beautiful is it's kind of like what my guides told me. It's like after a while, there's no choice. Your soul will always override every other human aspect that you live and do. The timing of it is never never known because we have the free will of how to get there. And But our soul will always guide where we need to be. And so our divine beloved is actually getting... Um, called and pulled by their soul and it's really funny i just got a great i get these crazy visuals i love my guides um this crazy visual of like one of our beautiful beings our beautiful divine masculine just kind of laying in bed and like they're suctioning him up as if he's being taken to like a ufo um but it's actually they're suctioning his soul up and like having a talk with him and saying this is what you need to do and i say him but again you all know um i just mean divine masculine energy um there's like saying, this is what you need to do. This is this is what you're you need to be focusing on. This is how it needs to happen. And that might mean like get out of the marriage that you're in, get out of the relationship you've been in, get out of the um, place you're living in or the job that you're in. It's no longer of use to you. You've outlived it. It's time to move forward. So that's a big piece of what's happening with divine masculine right now. So um, I also want to say that there is so much going on right now in terms of the potentials and possibilities. And while the potentials and possibilities have raised, so hasn't the doubt and the fear in all of us, the divine feminine. We've been waiting a long time. There's those of us, I mean, there's a few of you, I'm sure out there, and I say few, but there's probably quite a few, um, that it's been a few years that you've been on this journey. I'm sure there's quite many more that have been on this journey for many years. I myself, it has been 12 years that I've been on this journey and it is consciously on this journey because the truth is I've been on the journey since I was seven when I had this memory that I'm going to marry my other half. I'm going to find him and be with him. And I had this very clear feeling of he is my other half. I didn't know the word twin flame, so I always use the word other half. So all my life I used other half until about 2011 when my guide said the word we're using or humans are using is twin flame and that is who he is for you. Um, yes, you've been right with the other half. He's the other half of your soul, but the, the ongoing word that most people will begin to recognize is twin flame. And so I'm not saying that was a brand new word in 2011, but that's when I started using that word because before that I would always say my other half. Um, and I've had other people say twin soul. I've had other people say, um, my divine counterpart. Mine has always been the other half. So what, which to me always resonated with me in the sense of, He's not another me. He's the other half of me. And it's appropriate because there's times that we're so similar and there's times that we're so different. It's like having that, you know, human duality that we live in here on the planet. Um, but it's an external aspect of it. And I, I feel like with, with my other half, it's, I know for me, and I also believe my beloved knows this, and I'm sure yours does too on some level if they're not conscious of it. Because I don't know that my beloved's always conscious of it, but I do know on a human level he must have some consciousness. Um, that it's really hard to be without that other person. And even though we're not in a physical um, relationship right now, like he's not sitting right next to me. Energetically he is though. Um, but on a human level, he's not here. But it doesn't mean that we're not connected. And it's when we're not talking regularly, there is a an emptiness that both of us feel. And I think it's because we've had a physical connection, meaning we've, we've spoken in the physical regularly. We've seen each other. We've been together. So having that energy of us together in a, in a physical connection, it's like you, you start to like feel that embodiment of what the third piece feels like, you know? So um, a lot of times people talk about there's three three people in a relationship, there's you, there's the person, and then the relationship. And so I guess what I'm saying is like that part of it, you, you miss it and you long for that. And so we're beginning to feel that more and they are too. And they're recognizing what role you played in their life. Do they understand it fully? Um, I know it's a question a lot of you are asking because I get that question a lot from people. I wanna say it's like a dream for a lot of them. It's fleeting. The understanding and some of them it's like blows their mind 
and they're overwhelmed with it and they hold on to it and then it kind of dissipates but it's coming more and more in the reality so they're getting pummeled with you <laughs> so images of you thoughts of you or even um messages that relate to you so meaning um someone may come in and speak like you do use a language that you use or um has mannerisms similar to you so when they look at that person they're like oh my god that's, that reminds me of them you know so that that's something that's happening the other interesting thing that i want to talk about is about us okay so now i'm going to move to the divine feminine we talk a lot about the divine feminine normally we've talked a lot about the divine masculine today so we're going to talk a little bit about the divine feminine and what our role is we are in that time span where it's so 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 important to hold the space and what does that mean you know because i've always i've mentioned this quite often i've always written that as a divine feminine it's us navigating the journey because we have this consciousness and this awareness about us and when i think of when i think of the journey it's been haphazard if you will at times um i actually wrote i pulled a card this morning and it really struck me and i can't remember the card was um, an archangel card. I pulled one, I do one a day. I've been trying to do that one a day for everybody. I've been asking what can I give to everybody? What do I need to know for the day? And sometimes I'm like hit by the message so strongly. And today was one of them and it was about clear intentions, crystal clear intentions. I think it was Archangel Michael, but I can't recall. Um, and the message was about having unwavering faith. And I have to tell you, when I started this journey with my beloved, I absolutely had unwavering faith. And I kept on it, kept on it, kept on it. And I was good. I was actually good up until probably six months before my car accident when I started to get attacked really badly by dark energies and entities. And then um, I had my car accident. And that literally helped me sink to a lower vibration where it was really hard for me to find the faith and to maintain that unwavering faith because my whole life was turned upside down. I didn't have the proper care I needed for me and I wasn't taking, getting taken care of, let alone the journey of the twin flame part. I couldn't even think about that fully because I was in such crisis physically. And so I had let little faith for that, let alone for me and my twin. And so in the last few years, I've been really trying to amp up um, me and my vibration, like really working on it. And that's happened, which is great, and I, which is wonderful and I'm feeling grateful for it. But doing that, one of the things that have hap has happened for me is I've noticed that my unwavering faith isn't as strong. I don't know if that's the right word because there's days that I am completely clear. This is it. This is going to happen. This is who it is. Blah, blah. I know this is who he is, obviously. Um, but this is going to happen. There's no doubts in my mind. And then there's days where I'm like, ah. But I recognize how much I'm impacted by the people I'm surrounding myself with so some people are pretty freaking negative and i got to find a way to like step away if they're there and i'm noticing it but of course if they're your friends or your family you don't always notice it because you're in it you know so you don't always notice it so i'm trying to pay attention to that but i recognize this morning about that particular phrase unwavering faith and i think to myself wow you know it's been a while since i can say i've been in that space for a consistent time period and it's really hard to do that, especially with the way the energies are. I mean, they're very intense and your beloved is doubting left and right because they're questioning the life that they're in currently, which means they're questioning everything, which means it's reverberating into your reality and the energy of doubt. And you're like, oh my God, is this going to happen? Meanwhile, your beloved is actually like, I don't know if this is right with the relationship they're in, if they're still in a relationship or if they're um, trying to figure out what to do with you. Like they're questioning everything. So if they are, so are you. And we will translate it over obviously into our world as like, oh my God, I don't know, can I trust that this is gonna happen? Is he really gonna do it? I mean, it's been this long, blah, blah, blah. All the reasons that we know that we could doubt. And so that's affecting the journey. And I, I have a couple things to share with you to combat that. Um, the first is obviously to surround yourself with people that believe in the journey, truly believe in the journey, not just speak the words, but actually live it. So what that means is, yes, sometimes they're going to feel a little bit of ick and doubt, but they're actually trusting that there's a reason that's coming up. I got to face that and deal with it and then move forward through the journey. Um, but you want to be around people that are actually believing in you and that you don't have to hide who you are 
and that you truly can say what you need to say and feel what you need to feel and not feel repercussion from that. And that a lot of us don't have that because we have a, um, a society where people tend to not be always authentic. So that's a, that's a big thing. Um, the other, the other thing I want to say is when you think about your twin flame, When you think about your twin flame and you say, I know this is going to happen. What does that feel like for you? Where do you feel it in your body? And I'm going to stop for a moment and ask you to do that because I'm going to do that myself. I know I'm going to be with my beloved. What do you say that yourself and see what you feel? So getting honest with yourself is huge. Um, it's a big, big piece that you have to face. So I can tell you I felt a little burning in my heart chakra. And because I had this first initial like, yes, and then my mouth got tight. And I'm like, <gasps> so I still had that little bit of fear and doubt. So that I need to work on. Um, I'm sharing that with you because I think we don't realize as we're just kind of like canning our answers to people like a lot of us will say oh, I love my twin I'm gonna be with him um and we just keep saying it but we're not like always meaning it we're not always feeling it I don't even know if I'm being clear with that and I don't mean to say that you're intending intentionally not meaning it but there's somewhere inside of you that might be stopping you too you know so the reason I'm having you run through this little bit of exercise is because my guide said to me something the other day my one of my friends said I said, wow, a lot is changing and I really feel so good about this. I feel like so much is happening. And while our beloveds are in pain and struggling, this is good. This means this means they're being really awakened and they have no choice. This means blah, blah, blah. I was like rambling. And my friend said, I hope so. With, I have to tell you, an absolute no ounce of belief. None. None, none whatsoever. There, there was, wasn't even an ounce of belief that she believed that it was going to happen. So the hope so is um, in that moment particularly, she did not believe it. And that, that energy right there, she's saying to the universe without intending, it's not going to happen. So she's saying, so the universe is like, all right, we're going to make this happen. We're going to gather everything together. Here you go. We're getting ready. And then we say, I hope so. And it's kind of like, no, it's not going to happen. And you're just like, oh, you don't want that? Okay, let me clear it away. And so it's like this constant push and pull energetically that we're doing with our creative energy, our creation energy. We're all creators, right? So being creators that we are, the key to creation is actually learning that we, what we feel inside is actually creating our manifestations. And they might be haphazard. And I say haphazard meaning that we're not in a conscious, focused creation state. In order to be in that, we need to be in love. We need to be in balance. And this new energy, this multidimensional energy that we have access to is totally fueled by the energy of love. Now, you can easily say, oh, love is like, I'm in love with my twin and that's the love. No, it's not necessarily that love. It means being in the state of being who you truly are. Because being who you truly are is an essence of love. And so being in that love energy um, is what creates your reality. When you're in the I hope so or I don't believe, you're not in the love stage or you're having doubts about your twin and you're frustrated with them. That's not love. That's not love. That's fear. And I know you know that, but I'm saying that to you because when you're trying to create from that fear place, you're not creating love and you're creating out of fear. So you ultimately bring more fear to you or more of what you don't want. So that disconnect, that non-believing, whatever it is that's going on inside of you, that's the energy you're actually sending out. So it's constant push or pull that we're doing with the universe. And believe me, I'm guilty of it at, at times too. Thank goodness not as frequently as I used to be. And when I get into that space, I'm not there as long as I used to be. Gosh, it's not nearly as long. It's like moments sometimes. And so I'm, I'm sharing that because it's really important part of right now. So we're in an 11 year. We're in a time when anything is possible. I literally... I literally see that and feel that with so many different aspects of my life, but also with the clients I've been working with, everyone is at this cusp of like massive change and transformation. We have so many opportunities right now that were potentials 
the, the potentials didn't exist until even now. And that's an incredible thing in and of itself. And is it possible for anything and everything to happen? Absolutely. But we have to believe it, number one. And believing it is not saying it. It's like literally believing in your core that everything can happen. And that means unwavering faith that anything can happen. And that also applies to abundance in your life. It applies to having a child, having a marriage, having love with your twin, and having your twin come to you. It applies to all of that. Because if we are not having unwavering faith that it's possible, then remember the opposite of that is what occurs, right? So um, I want you to, I just want you to really think about that because I feel like so many of us get caught in that trap of, I want to be with my twin. I'm going to be with my twin. And we say it because it's expected of us instead of being truthful and saying, you know, I'm having a really shitty day. And right now I don't give a shit what he's doing or where he is. I don't want to know. And feeling that feeling in that moment, you let it go. It's gone. You, you let it go, it's gone. So you can move right back into, I love my twin and I'm going to be with my twin. And so it's a big deal for us. So in this energy, in this frequency, this vibration, this 11 energy, it's really, really imperative. I, I'm getting it so strongly, so imperative to capture the energy right now and be in the belief that it's possible, it's going to happen. And to do that, it means clearing away the stuff that you aren't feeling and so I want you to go stand in front of the mirror and say what it is you love or want what you desire or what you want to manifest I mean you can look in the mirror and say I'm going to be with my twin flame I know I'm going to be with my twin flame and if you say that and just stand there for a few moments and allow yourself to truly feel into that energy and recognize where you're feeling it in your body and what does it feel like is it feeling good in your body is it a, like warmth or is it a like Ugh! Or is it, um, or does it feel numb? And what my guides are saying is that's your answer. That's going to give you, your, that's your like guidance system. That's going to tell you if you're in alignment with what it is you're asking for and what it is you want. If you find that you're not in alignment, then it's time to do a little bit of work on you. Um, this is not about your twin at the moment. This is about you. And, but how does it affect your twin? Because if you're holding and becoming that beacon for him, or her you need to be a beacon and if you're not the beacon they're not going to be able to be coming to you directly they're holding out their hand look reaching they're reaching and you need to hold out your hand to them in order for that to happen what uh, my guides are saying is like clear away any blocks or obstructions to your heart that and a lot of us are you know a lot of us in society we get really scared we want to be right you know we get scared about being wrong and we get scared about what people are going to think. And so what if I say I'm going to be with my twin and he doesn't show up ever and look how wrong I'm going to look. That right there is doubt. That right there is like the source of fear of being seen differently by others. That's something that needs to get cleared and move too. And so if that gets cleared and move, then you can actually move on into the next energy. And so being in that space of like, I, I want to be a beacon of light for my beloved, that's what's going to draw him to you because your beloved is actually waiting to receive that like bat signal, if you will. Uh, spirit saying, here you go. This is where you're going. We're going to magnetize you, pull you to this path. And as you're getting pulled to the path, he's getting pulled, he, she's getting pulled to the path, the mission, as that's happening, they're looking for something that's going to give them a sign and you're the sign. You are. Your love is a sign. Your truth is a sign. Your light is a sign. And that is what you need to send out to your beloved. And by the mixed signals that you're sending to the universe, it's kind of like you're sending mixed signals to your twin as well. And they aren't hearing you on a human level, perhaps. They are, because you never know how their energies are connected to yours in terms of what they're sensing. My beloved feels everything I, I talk about. And I think some of it he actually hears. And I don't know if he hears it like you and I are here are speaking, but I, I feel like um, he hears it. He It affects him in the way of how he's, how he's thinking. It comes into his brain as a programming or as a um, way of thinking or a thought that might pass through his mind. So if I'm like, you know, this is just, I don't know if it's even worth it anymore. Don't you think that's going into his brain? He's probably like, I don't even know if this is worth it anymore. And it could be something he's working on. It could be something that's going on in his life or it could be completely about our journey. And I don't want that mixed message to go to him because the truth is I love him and I want him here with me. I want him to be beside me. 
and my guides are telling me it's possible and it's going to happen and that it's probable. <laughs> the probability is so high because of what we're in right now energy-wise that it's so important that we stay in focus and stay in love because we are the beacon of light for them. Let's be that beacon, okay? I, I'm going to stop rambling because I know that I've been rambling for quite a bit of time. I want to share with you a couple things coming up. So I'm doing my group webinar meditation, Twin Flame Meditation. Facebook has like blocked me from posting this as an event so I can't share it on social media and um, Facebook's been really weird and in interfering with my um, comments on posts that have been made because somebody made a comment and they literally marked it as spam and I can't do anything about it which is unbelievable and it drives me mad so be conscious of like social media hiding things from you but if you're interested in doing the twin flame meditation I am hosting it on Sunday January 14th at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time which is New York time I'm not sure where it is in your your scheduled time, but please check that out if you're interested. You don't have to be on the call. I'd love for you to join me on that call, but you don't have to be. If you want to come, if if you want to participate, well, knowing that you're there, I'll pull your energy in. You'll be there, but also you'll receive the recording afterwards, and you'll still be part of it. So you can listen to it before, or after, or during. I mean, during, after, or um, you can purchase it at a later date too. But I would love for you to join us in the physical energy because right now coming together at twin, as twins, we amplify and unite each other and we assist each other in bringing our vibration up. And the power that comes through during these meditations is unbelievable. And every time I've had a meditation, my twin has contacted me within an hour to three hours after the meditation. And it's amazing because he totally feels it. And quite often he'll say, I felt you today. I felt you a little while ago or I felt you this morning. And I'm like, oh, you did? <laughs> What did you feel? I felt your warmth around me. You were there. I don't know. I just knew you were there. And it's funny because he's really sensing it because it's amplifying the energy. So as a group, it's amplified. So you have 10 people. That's 10 times the power of one. Amazing. So I'm just um, 10 times the power of 10. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, but it's amazing power. And so if you would like to join, I'm going to have the, in the links below. Also, I have an energy body upgrade, which is an upgrade and integration chamber, and it bring it clears your blocks and it helps assist in aligning you to the light that's coming into the planet, making sure that your body can adjust to receiving it. And it helps so that you don't have as intense of a, a shifting, if you will. A lot of cool things happen during those upgrades. I never know exactly what's gonna happen. What I do is I um, offer them out to you the night before, I send you instructions how to receive it, and then when it happens, the day two to two, three, blah, blah, blah. two to three days later, I send you um, what happened during the upgrade, um, what my experience was, meaning what I saw and what they told me was being done for each person. And it's pretty powerful. And if you do join, um, you sign up for you and you can both you and your twin will be included in the upgrade. Um, that link will be below as well for you. But I, I really encourage you to do the meditation because I feel like it's so powerful for all of us. and. I just, I wanna help all twins. I feel like we all have been tired and we've been drugged through the mud, if you will, and we're ready. We're ready for like magic to happen. And here's the funny thing, the universe is like, we're ready to give it to you. We're ready for magic to be with you too. And we want to give it to you. So let's come together and make it happen. You know, that's the key and the goal. So I send you all love and light. Um, and one last word of um, message from Archangel Michael, his word is, he wants me to share with you. I've had a lot of interference recently and a few things that have just, I'm seeing stuff in my place. Um, a few things have been happening where I know that my beloved is being attacked by the dark. The reason I know it is from the messages I've been receiving and the why is it happening? Because they're being magnetized to their path. Being magnetized to their path means they're in that box and all that stuff has to get cleared so they can go forward and all that stuff that's coming up is drawing some of the dark to them so i want to emphasize to do some protection around you do some protection around your twin a little bit every day if you can okay namaste so much love and i i wish you a blessed magnificent union